Oh, it's moving. Okay, I'm gonna get up here. <laughs> Great. So I do want to thank you uh, for volunteering to help with the Facebook Live. This is the first week we haven't done it, but to be all on, in all honesty, for the last four or five weeks, it hasn't worked. I last week I thought I'm gonna figure this out. In my office, I put play live, and it recorded for me for two minutes in my office. I come out here and do the same thing, and it does nothing. I thought, what is wrong with this? And so we gotta figure out what's going on, and I appreciate your offer to help us figure that out. Um, turn your Bibles, if you will, to Revelation chapter 12. Please stand. Uh, the reverence for the reading of God's word. Revelation chapter 12. We're going to read verse 11. Revelation chapter 12, uh, verse 11. Not to be confused with the other our book in the New Testament. Romans 12, 11, which is one of my favorite passages of scripture, by the way. Um, never be lacking in zeal, maintaining your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. I love that passage. I don't want to be lacking in zeal. Um, but this one's powerful as well. Very powerful, in fact, and very timely for the church today. Not just Bethany Church, but for the church worldwide. Revelation 12, verse 11. They overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the teachings and, and the message that you've given us. And I know as this message refers, or this, this scripture refers to end times and overcoming the enemy's evil tricks. The Lord, it also refers to the early church. As Lord, the enemy was out to destroy the body of Christ. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much as to shrink unto death. And Lord, I believe that in we living in these last days... That, Lord, that you are wanting to do a new thing in your church that's not really a new thing. It's an old thing that the body of Christ has forgotten. And that, Lord, is walking by faith and not by fear. So, Lord, I pray that you would stir our hearts, that you would humble us, humble us today. That we would hunger and thirst after your righteousness, Lord. We'd be led by your spirit. And that, Lord, as we hear this word today, that, oh, Lord, it would not be my philosophy, but it would be your heart. For, Lord, that is the desire of our hearts, is to hear from heaven. So teach us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless. You may be seated. It is my hope and prayer that every person in this church body has a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That is the desire of my heart. That you can't just come to church here and hear me preach Sunday after Sunday and not know Jesus. It's my hope and prayer that every person in this church body is seeking to grow in their personal faith, becoming more like Christ, not living off that day old manna filled with worms and maggots and mold, but wanting to grow in the relationship with Christ. That every, my hope and prayer is that every person in this church body is listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit and following where He leads. There's a lot of voices that we hear. And church, I pray this. this uh, there's a reason I pray this prayer when I'm preaching, and that is I don't want you to follow my voice. I want you to follow the voice of the Lord. Because if you're hearing it from me and you're not hearing it from the Lord, 
Something's wrong. People come to me and say, Pastor, the Lord's telling me that you need to. And I often would say, uh, as soon as the Lord tells me, I will follow that. But I am not going to follow what you're telling me. Even if you use the Lord as your explanation. Amen? Amen. My, my hope is that every one of us would listen personally and follow what the Holy Spirit is saying. And my hope and prayer is that every person in this church body is strengthened by the faith. So as not to become overcome, so as not to be overcome by a general fear of this world. Church, brothers and sisters, people on YouTube and Facebook, there's a lot of things going on in the world around us. There's a lot of things. And what it is created within the body of Christ as well as the world at large, is massive amounts of fear. And some of you may say, yeah, preach it, pre uh, preach it, brother, preach it. Keep, keep speaking, that's for somebody else. They need to hear it. I think we all need to hear it. Because I think in some way, shape, or form, we've allowed fear to placate faith. You hear me? May I share my heart with you for a moment? I'm going to kind of, I have it scripted, but it's kind of off script. I've said this, made this statement before, and I want you to hear the whole thing. If you just hear this statement and don't hear my explanation, you're going to miss something. I've said this many times. I do not fear COVID. And I do not fear the vaccine. Did you hear me? First of all, I, I, by saying that, I am not saying I don't believe COVID's real. I did not say that. Brian and Valerie, you know it's real. And, and we've known people who have been affected by that. And I feel horrible when I hear of the statistics of many who've lost their lives during this pandemic. I'm not saying it's not real because it is very real. Hello? Yeah. COVID is very real. So how can I say I'm not afraid of it in the midst of how real and devastating it has been? The Apostle Paul made a very clear comment in the book of Philippians, and I don't, uh, this one is the only one that will not be on the screen today. I didn't give it to Bill. Like I said, I'm kind of off script for a moment. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, that's right. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, for to me to live is Christ, what? And to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. Amen? But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body, con convinced of this. I know that I will remain. And I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. What is the Apostle Paul saying? He is saying, I do not fear death. In fact, I embrace it when it comes, because that means I get to be with Jesus for eternity. Yeah. But if I don't die, God still has plans for me on this earth. It's not to hide. It's not to walk in fear. It's to continue to walk forward in faith. As I said, I don't fear COVID, nor do I fear the vaccine. I don't fear the vaccine because, first of all, I love the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart. And people have, have, have been concerned 
about the mark of the beast. And let me tell you something. I did not sign on any dotted line saying that I would worship anyone but Jesus. And I am also very aware, and i got to be careful while I say this, because I am not saying don't get it. I am very aware, just as you can not get it, be exposed, and still be safe sometimes, you can get it, be exposed, and still get sick sometimes too. I, my faith is not in things of the flesh, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. For he is the only one that's fully going to protect you and me. In scripture, I have some verses I do want to share. John 15, or 17, 15, 21. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them... I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. Have you ever heard the statement, we are in the world but not of the world? We're dwelling in this world. We are following the directions, allowing the Lord to work through us in the midst of the world in which we live. And I think some of us, church, have forgotten that there are people that we have been called to love into the kingdom. And sometimes that means becoming citizens on a temporary visa in this world. Because we're not of this world. We're just merely visiting for the time being. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, we read, Do not love the world or anything of the, in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. When I, sit, when I read this, I want you to understand, this is not saying... Whoever loves the lost in this world does not love God. That's not the point. The point of this passage of Scripture is whoever so embraces the things of this physical world, who loves this world so much that they diminish their faith and trust and confidence in God, then the love of the Father is not in them. Brothers and sisters, we have been called to love our neighbor. But the first and greatest commandment is what? To love the Lord your God with all your heart. And I think sometimes, church, and, and for brothers and sisters, I'm speaking this to Bethany Church, but let me tell you, I believe this is a timely message for the body of Christ. When our confidence is more in the world around us than in our Savior, we better, we better check things out. Yeah. And the reason that there is so much fear in the world around us is because we have more confidence in what we see in the world than what we see in our Savior. And the problem is not with him. The problem is with us. Yeah. <clears throat> our faith should not be connected to politicians, scientists, or material possessions, but found in Christ alone. Amen. As I've said, there are many things. I'm always careful how I say this. In our last election, there were people whose faith in the future of this nation rested with Trump. And there goes our nation. There goes our world. Everything's falling apart. There are people who said, whose faith, Christians whose faith was in Biden. Oh, now the world's going to be better. Let me tell you something, church. They are not the Savior. Amen. Neither one of them. Christ alone is the Savior. He's the one where we should place confidence. 
That does not mean we should live reckless or careless lives. I'm not saying, I, I, oh, you have COVID, can I have a drink of your drink? That would be recklessness. I'm not saying that we should be reckless or careless. But there was this uh, mindset many, many uh, years ago where people were looking for the devil under every bush. You hear me? Oh, the devil's under that bush. Oh, the devil over there. Oh, the devil's over there. And everything was of the devil. And every, they were so afraid that the devil was out to get them that they just didn't do anything. And now we call the devil COVID. And he's over there, and he's over there, and he's over there, and he's over there, and he's over there. And so we just don't do anything. Again, recklessness would say, if I know where the devil is and I go and hang out with the devil, that's a problem. But to question where the devil is all the time, that keeps me from fulfilling the Great Commission, does a disservice to our confidence in our faith. And a God who will protect us. Doesn't mean we should live reckless or careless lifestyles, for that's foolishness. Neither, neither does it mean we should live in a perpetual state of fear of this world, for we are more than conquerors through Christ. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. What am I saying here? Jesus says there will be problems in this world. Anybody have any problems this week? Yeah. I got a prayer request. Uh, I am so grateful that I've had a good sub for my route for the past four years. Her last day is today. I want to get days off again. I'm praying that God would give me some... The, 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 I know how long the process is at the post office and hiring people. I pray that somebody would get hired quickly and that I can get days off again. Because if not, it's going to be difficult. Yes, have you ever had trouble? We have trouble in this world. But take heart. Take heart. Jesus has overcome this world. Yeah. Romans 8, 37. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. What stands in the way in our spiritual lives? What stands in the way of our faith? What stands in the way of what God is calling us to do? We will overcome it because we are more than conquerors through him. Amen. Amen. We don't have to succumb. This world is changing. This world is changing. A new morality is sweeping through the church amongst young people. And involving in a willingness to change scripture to match present cultural sensitivities. Brothers and sisters, I want to say this. I really believe that we are called to love all people. Amen. We are called to love all people. And... When, what I would say to you is this, because I know that the message that has confused so much is if the church is loving people, then why are we running down specific segments of the world? Good point. How many gossips have a problem with homosexuals? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, get my point? Again, when Jesus was dealing with the woman caught in adultery, did he focus on her sin? Or did he focus on his love for her? No, at no, at no point did he say it wasn't sin. At no point did he say it wasn't sin. When Jesus was dealing with sinners, he never said that their sin wasn't sin. He said, I love them. <clears throat> we cannot condone sin in our own lives. 
But I think too many of us are pointing the finger at other people's sin instead of dealing with our own. And so when I talk about the changing morality, there are those who want to change the concept of sin to where it's not sin. Things aren't sin. It makes us feel better. And yet, brothers and sisters, I am fully aware that I am a sinner saved by the grace of God. Amen. That I am not perfect. That I have failed so many times. And I pray, Lord, make me more like you. People are inspired by the messages of politicians, musicians, actors, and athletes, rather than by pastors, missionaries, evangelists, and Bible teachers. Like I said, the world is changing. Remember what was it? Charles Barkley many years ago said, I am not a role model. <laughs> Very ironic, uh, considering even though he, he was very right in saying that, people were looking up to professional athletes as role models, and still are. There is a general skepticism of anyone with the skills and calling to be a leader. I find it very funny. When I look at the state of Oregon, I mean, we could talk about national politics and so many people were complaining about President Trump. So many people are complaining about President Biden. In Oregon, everybody's complaining about the governor. No matter what side you're on. And it's like, there is a real huge skepticism of leadership today. Hello? Yeah. We don't like leaders. Even if they're called, even if they rise to that point. Christianity, in some ways, is becoming a religion of convenience rather than a life-changing movement that is dangerous and risky. Hello. Have we become complacent? Have we become comfortable? Have we become to a point where our faith walk is a matter of convenience rather than a walk that changes our lives? May we never forget the risks inherent with being a Christ follower. Jesus suffered at the hands of wicked men and promised us no greater protection for following him. All of the disciples suffered an unsafe fate, filled with persecution and even martyrdom. And I say unsafe because John, who was not martyred, was not comfortable either. Prison, boiling in oil, things like that, doesn't sound super comfortable to me. Rather than filling their days with fear of the future, each one walked under the anointed leading of the Holy Spirit by faith. I pray the fear that permeates the world around us would be dispelled in each one of our lives by an abiding faith in the love, in the strength, and in the divine authority of our Heavenly Father. trying to decide where we go from here. I have just started my the message. <laughs> and it is time out. So I want to know where the Lord's leading. I will say this. If you're taking notes, point number one, there's a world of fears. There are a world of fears. One of those fears that we have, safety and security. You guys give me a little bit more time, right? Yeah. I, I believe God's wanting to do something here. And yeah. I tried to convince, con convince, condense this, but this is percolating for two months. And I really believe this is important. Safety and security. By faith, every action we take for the glory of God is with the belief that we will make it through to the other side. Every day we live in this life is a risk we are taking. When you get out of bed in the morning, you are taking a risk. When you get into an automobile, you are taking a risk. <laughs> when we're being ourselves around people who may dislike us, we are taking a risk. 
There's a great hymn of the church. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Jesus offended and riled up a whole lot of people while he was here. Jesus was betrayed, arrested, rejected, and crucified. So when we sing that song, I have decided to follow Jesus, what are we saying? I'm willing to be betrayed, arrested, rejected, and crucified? That may be what it means. As we follow Christ. If you're here to hear a safe and easy and comfortable message, I don't got that for you today. <laughs> but I believe that the message of the gospel is God's salvation to us and to the world around us. And those in the first century church and those throughout history understood that it wasn't the safe. It was about putting their lives on the line for the sake of souls. What is safe about following in the footsteps of Christ? Another fear that we have is the possibility of failure. One sermon that you've heard me preach many times. The parable of the stewards. Remember that? Sometimes I'd give out money or sometimes paper clips or whatever it may be. And say, so what are you going to do with this? I want to know a year from now what you're doing with it. And as we talk about the text that, that that passage comes from, where there's a parable of this one steward was given five talents, one was given two, one was given one, the one with five uh, doubled them in a year, or when the steward, when the master came back and had ten, the one with two doubled them had four, the one with one dug a hole, buried it, and when the master came back and saw that he did nothing with that talent, even the one talent that he had got taken from him. Now this relates to where we are, church, because when we are paralyzed with fear of failure, we don't do anything with what God's given us. And why do we feel fa fear? Why do we fear Failure because we fear that we might lose what we have. And when we read that parable, the one who was the most afraid of losing what he had ended up losing what he had yeah. because of the fear of failure. <clears throat> Unlike gambling in a casino, Risking our investments for Christ has much greater odds of working out. Why? Because we are led by the Holy Spirit. Because we are equipped by the Holy Spirit. And because we are blessed by the Holy Spirit. God works the details out for his glory. Fear paralyzes people and prevents them from moving forward to the goal and toward the prize. And if we let fear of failure stand in the way of where God's leading us, we will lose what we have. Number three, or the, the third fear is the fear of the unknowns of life. Decisions have consequences. And indecision is a decision. Decisions have consequences, and indecision is a decision. Last night we had a great talk, Angie, Michael, Becky, and I, about looking back in life and thinking of decisions that we've made and how they affected our lives and wondering what if. You ever play that what if game? After my sophomore year in college, I wanted to transfer to Puget Sound Bible College because I wanted to play basketball and the school I was attending didn't have, had cut out their program. Here's the what-if scenario. Now, here's what happened if I would have done that. Becky and I wouldn't have gotten married. Stephen, Michael, and Cassie wouldn't be here. I would say I'm pretty blessed. 
by the decision that I made. It was a tough one, and there's times I wish I could have played basketball, but I don't, I don't want to get rid of what I have to go back to what might have been. And at that point in time, I did not know what lied ahead. When we make decisions in life, life is filled with unknowns. We don't know what's coming next. We don't know how this decision is going to affect the rest of our world. All I know is this, our decisions have consequences. And our lives are changed. We may not like some of our past decisions, but without them, our lives would have been so much different and not necessarily, and more than likely, not better. When venturing into the unknowns of life, we need to trust in the Lord. He will direct our path. He will protect us from destruction, and he will work all things out. Trust him. Amen. I don't understand what's ahead. I don't know what's ahead. I just know this. I trust him. Amen. <clears throat> there are no perfect parents. And I had a hard time saying this because my parents are here. <laughs> you guys did very, very well. But none of us are perfect, right? You bet it's a perfect parent. I want some pointers, please. I would get this thing figured out. There are no perfect parents. We all make mistakes along the way. The hope is that what is remembered is our love for our children and not the bad decisions we made while trying to raise them. Think about that. I know. They'd probably tell me all the mistakes that I made. Not a one. Not a one. <laughs> Maybe asking the wrong one. Where's Cass? <laughs> <laughs> but in reality, my hope is not that they remember the mistakes, but they remember the love we have. And I think that that's what life, when we look at the life that we live, we're so fearful of what's out there. We don't know. But we don't stop living because we don't know. we got to keep living, keep making decisions, keep growing, keep moving forward. In spite of what we don't know. Visionary people who change the world take risks with no guarantees. <laughs> I've tried to imitate successful people only to fall on my face. Because you can't imitate you have to be led by the Spirit personally. Amen. That's why I said at the beginning, I don't want you to just follow my lead. I want you to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we would be working in conjunction together under his leading. Amen. In Haggai 1.6 we read, You have planted much but harvested little. You eat but have not enough. You drink but never have your fill. You put on clothes but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. You know what I'm reminded by this passage of scripture is that we can do all that we can do in the flesh to get ahead, to get things to work out, to try and fix the problems in our life. And in the midst of all of that, it still slips through the cracks because we can't do it without Jesus. I've tried. I, I've tried to pay off debts by working harder and harder and the harder that I work, the more the money disappears <laughs> and not in the direction I, I want the debt to be gone and where does the money go God's in charge Amen. trust in him our faith will carry us while the world attempts to block our efforts too many people take early setbacks as an agree argument to cut losses and run but no one can accurately predict the future we just need to take a risk for the glory of God and leave the results in his hands. Title this message of faith that overcomes fear. So I want to share with you some foundations of our faith. Number one, God's past performance. I have confidence because when I look back, I see what God did in scripture. 
I see what God has done in the lives of people around me. Now I've seen what God's done in my life. I know how the Lord has taken impossible odds and turned things around. So when I look at God's past performance, I have a new found faith and confidence and assurance knowing that what he's done before, he can and will do again. Amen. Not only do I look at God's past performance, I look at God's present promises. God's present promises. That is when I get to know scripture. What does the Bible say? God's promises are found in his word. I believe his present promises are not just what we see in Scripture, but also an ongoing, dynamic relationship with our Creator. If, if I'm having a conversation with God on a daily basis, and I'm getting to hear his heart on a regular basis, then I'm going to know what his promises are to me. If we're not having that dialogue, if we're not spending that time in a dynamic, I mean a living and active relationship with the Lord, and we're missing something. So the foundation of our faith, God's past performance, God's present promises, and number three, God's powerful plans. Where God leads, God equips. God's plans will never fail, even though success rarely looks like we thought it would. I want you to know, sometimes what we consider failure it's complete success. And I, I'm going to throw out an information I, I've shared before at missions conferences. Um, and I don't remember the name of the person. I just know that there's this missionary who went to this uh, tribal area and spent his whole life there. His children died, his wife died could not reach a, he felt like a complete failure, went home with nothing, not even having the assurance that anyone found Christ while he was there. 30 years later, this man's destitute, left ministry, wasn't going to do anything. It is discovered that a church was established because of the ministry that he did in that area, a thriving church where people were hungry for God. He left believing he was a failure, having given everything to the ministry and losing everything in the process and not seeing any fruit personally. And yet God, God's word did not return void. It bore fruit. <clears throat> People were saved. Lives were changed. And this man was invited back many, many years later, overwhelmed how God worked. You know, we follow God's leading and sometimes it feels like nothing's happening. It doesn't look like success. It looks like failure. And that's because we don't see things as God sees them. Supernaturally, God can flip the script and change circumstances in your favor. Some examples. Joseph was in prison. He had been forgotten. He had been falsely accused. He had been sold by his brothers. And he was stuck in prison. What was it going to take to get him out of prison? Pharaoh had a dream. That's it. God flipped the script. He went from being a prisoner and a slave to being second in command in Egypt. Amen. Don't tell me God doesn't change things. When I think of uh, Gideon... <clears throat> Gideon was told to, to destroy his dad's idols. He did it at night. He didn't want to do it because he was afraid he might be caught. So he did it at night. He was very fearful, very scared. He was told he's going to go fight the Midianite army. He says, with what army? Well, assemble an army. So he gets a big army that's not really big in his mind because it's very small compared to the Midianites. And he's still very afraid. God says you got too many. And God says you got too many again. And finally he gets down to 300 going against an army of 
several hundred thousand, what's God do? Brings victory through Gideon. Amen. A timid, scared young man who defeats a mighty army. God flips the script. When I look at scripture, I see Daniel. The rule in that land was don't worship anyone except the king. Daniel couldn't abide by that, so he worshiped God. Three times a day, he would go and he would pray to the God of heaven in front of the window because that's where he always had done it. He was not going to back down. And where did he wind up? In a den of hungry lions. I've seen cats. When they're hungry, they're hungry. <laughs> yes, I know it. You ever seen a lion tear apart meat at a zoo? They're hungry. God flipped the script. These, these lions didn't harm Daniel. He was protected. God has a way of doing things that we cannot comprehend. Amen. That's where faith, faith in God's powerful plans the list goes on and on throughout history. The key thing to remember is that many plans come through the midst of difficulties and circumstances rather than the circumventing of them. Too often we want to go to that level. We want to go to that destination without going through the problem. But when I look at scripture, how many people went through the problem under the divine hand and protection of God and made it to the destination? We have to go through those trials. So in closing, I'm, I'd say I'm sorry, but I'm really not because I think God wants us to hear this today. If you're, if you're needing to be somewhere, um, the restaurant will still be open. I understand that our text refers to the overcoming the enemy during the Great Tribulation, but it is true of people of faith throughout all generations. Moses stood up to Pharaoh. David defended God's honor before the giants. Elijah challenged, I, I love, I read this yesterday in the one year Bible. Elijah challenged the 450 prophets of Baal. Peter stood up and preached the gospel on the day of Pentecost. Paul standing before religious leaders in the book of Acts and making a stand. People declaring their faith before certain death, and we've seen it throughout the ages. Comfort and complacency has made the American church too soft on many fronts. Unwilling to push back against attacks on our faith. Unwilling to stand up to so-called Bible scholars who redefine scripture in man's image. Unwilling to share the gospel with the lost because it might offend some. I'm struck by the words found in our text. And I will close with this. <clears throat> in our text in Revelation, verse, chapter 12, verse 11, what's the last phrase? They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. In John 12, 25, we read, The man who loves his life will lose it. While the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternity, eternal life. Rather than fear death, which is inevitable for all, we should fear an eternal death. Without Christ, for all who fail to receive his gift of eternal life. As a Christian, we don't have a death wish. We're not trying. I, I, if I was to read about the 12 disciples, if I was to read about people throughout Scripture, I don't think any of them were saying, oh, I want to die today. That wasn't their plan. And as Christians, that's not our goal. We don't have a death wish. We just have a deep yearning to love Jesus and to bring others into a relationship with him. And if we're doing that, it's not going to be safe. Amen? Amen? Let's stand together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
Father God, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for the power and the truth that we read this morning. And I pray that, Lord God, we would humble our hearts. The Lord, that we would listen attentively to your leading. The Lord Jesus, when it comes to faith and fear, that our faith would conquer our fear. Lord, whether it be fear of safety and security, whether, whether it be fear of the unknown, whether it be fear of failure, I pray that our faith in you would conquer those fears. That we would trust in you and that, Lord, that we would experience the plans and the promises that you have for us. That, Lord, we would be led by your spirit into new territory. That, Lord, that we would receive those new opportunities. That, Lord, that we take on new challenges. Not because we just love challenges, but because in order to reach the destination, we have to go through some windy roads. But on the other side, we will know without all assurance that it's worth it. So, Lord, I pray that as we go today, guide and direct us, strengthen us, encourage us. I pray that we would have an abiding, dynamic walk with you. And that, Lord Jesus, that we would do what's right by faith rather than just do what's safe by fear. Guide us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless. You are dismissed. Board meeting for board members. We do have a board meeting today.